I agree with the descriptions of me but I guess I don't agree that the way I think makes me depressed. How do you understand it? I get depressed when things go wrong. Like when the biased liberal media speaks against me. How can the biased liberal media make you depressed? Well, they have said a lot of bad stuff about me and such. If people don't like me I'll never become president. So being accepted by the liberal media means a lot to you. But if not being liked by others could drive people into clinical depression, wouldn't you expect a lot more people to be depressed? Do all people who are not liked by everybody get depressed? No, but it depends on how important being liked is to a person and all that, you know? Right, and who decides the importance? Well, golly, I do. And so, what we have to examine is your way of viewing people's opinions of you, or the way you think about being accepted by others, and how it affects your chances of being happy. Do you agree? Yes. Do you agree that the way you interpret other people's opinions about you will affect you? You might feel depressed, you might have trouble sleeping, not feel like eating, and you might even wonder if you should drop out of the race. Totally. I have been thinking that I wasn't going to make it because so many people don't like me. Now what does losing the respect of others mean? T hat I could never be president. And what does that mean to you? That I'm not good enough. Anything else? That I can never be happy. And how do these thoughts make you feel? Very unhappy. I cry myself to sleep every night. It was especially bad when Bristol did not win Dancing with the Stars. So it is the meaning of the public's acceptance of you that makes you unhappy. In fact, believing that you can never be happy is a powerful factor in producing unhappiness. So, you get yourself into a trap by definition. Failure to become the president equals, I can never be happy. Does that make sense? No, not at all. Thank you doctor for showing me the error in my cognitive style. I need to go now. I have an appointment to shoot deer from a helicopter in about an hour. God bless America. Oh boy, wasn't that silly. Thus far we have discussed the basic tenets of cognitive theory and discussed the empirical evidence supporting this theory for use in psychotherapy with a wide range of disorders in diverse populations. We will now observe how cognitive theory would be applied in a less satirical and more natural therapy setting. Using the common case vignette, we will now observe Teresa discussing her inability to assert herself. For purposes of this assignment, we will assume that Teresa and the social worker have already had a couple of therapy sessions. Hello, Teresa. How are you today? I guess I'm okay. That's really good to hear. So last week, we talked about your goals of wanting to feel much less overwhelmed, and we were able to assert things about your relationship. How have things been in the last week? Well, pretty much the same, I guess. Um, Katrina had a big fit the other day when she couldn't watch this movie she wanted to watch, and I was really tired from a long day at the bank, and you know I just wanted to keep the peace and quiet and, and not have her get upset. But then Allison got mad at me, and you know, and she said that I was being a pushover and that I'm always a pushover, and you know I just let people walk all over me. And then she started yelling at me, and things got really out of control. And then Katrina got more upset, and it just just went downhill from there. It sounds like that you were really frustrated about Allison's anger. How did it make you feel that she was personally attacking you? I mean, it definitely felt like she was attacking me. I mean, she was yelling, it made me feel really helpless. I just didn't know what to say. And then, you know, I, I felt worse because the yelling made Katrina upset. It just made me feel like there's something wrong with me because she was yelling at me and normal families don't yell at each other like that, so mm. it must be something I'm doing. So what does it mean to you if family members yell at each other? Well, I mean, I never really thought about it, but I guess it means that they're mad. And what does it mean to you if your family's mad? Well, it means that I must have done something to make, make them mad. Do you blame yourself for other people's frustrations? Well, yeah. <laughs> mm. I mean, if, if I didn't do it, I mean, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. 
Last week, we discussed you writing down your thoughts about feeling stressed. Were you able to do that this week? I did. That's very good. So, when this incident with Allison happened, what are the thoughts that you wrote down? I felt really overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know what to say or, or how to react. Um, mm -hmm. Made me feel really helpless. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I try to be a, a good mother. I try to be a good partner. Just I try to be a good person, yeah, you know. Um, but it just seems like Allison's always like either mad at me or she's not. It's just up, up or it's down. I mean, just felt like, um, yeah. you know, that I'm, I'm doing something to make all this happen or yeah. it wouldn't be happening. How does it make you feel when Allison yells at you? Sure, I guess it just makes me think she doesn't care what I think, you know? I mean, Katrina is my baby, and, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be a pushover, but I just don't want her to, like, you know, feel frustrated. Yeah. So we really want to think about the macro dynamics of your life. Have you ever had any other experiences where you felt like things you had to say or your opinion wasn't valued? pretty much felt that way like mm -hmm. all my life it's just mm -hmm. you know easier to just kind of keep the peace that's why I like my job at the bank so much and I, I just really miss it yeah. I mean I felt like being a loan officer that people saw me as being an important person yeah. and it made me feel really good I'll, I'll probably never find another job like that at, again mm -hmm. now when you say that no one in your life particularly wants to hear you or wants to hear what you have to say who specifically are you referring to Pretty much everyone, my, mm -hmm. my friends, mm -hmm. my family, my ex-husband, he was even really bad. Can you tell me a little bit of how your family treated you when you were growing up or some of your childhood experiences and interactions with your family members? Well, I have an older sister, Maria, mm -hmm. and we have two older brothers. Mm -hmm. Our mom had a chronic physical illness, so we pretty much, um, you know, like, uh, we're left to fend for ourselves. Mm -hmm. our, our dad had a job where he didn't work long hours and travel a lot. Wow. So pretty much my older siblings took care of me because I was the youngest. That sounds like a lot of responsibility. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. most of it fell on, on Maria. Um, but as I got older, I, I tried to help. But Maria felt like since she was the oldest mm -hmm. girl that she should be the one in charge. So it was just kind of easier to like let her do that and, and you know. It sounds like you would actually like to take a more active role in the decisions that happen in your family. Well, it didn't used to be that big of a deal. I mm -hmm. just let, you know, Maria run mm -hmm. everything. It's just mm -hmm. easier to keep the peace. Yeah. Um, but now that our parents are older, I, I would like them to come live with us. And, you know, mm -hmm. Maria doesn't think so. Yeah. Now, have you spoken to Maria and kind of expressed your opinion about these things to her? I've tried, but she just won't listen to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, she thinks that because Katrina has problems that I already mm -hmm. have too much on my plate. Now, what do you think would happen if you asserted yourself to Maria? What do you think would happen if you told her what you thought about the best interest of your parents and your family? I just think she would tell me it's a bad idea and I, I can't handle it. Has Maria actually told you that? No. You... But I'm sure that's what she thinks. Mm. I mean, she's always treated me like I couldn't keep up with stuff. What would it mean for you to stand your ground with Maria? Well, I've thought about it, but mm -hmm. there's no way I could do that. Mm. I mean, I, I really want our parents to come live with, you know, like me, but just the thought of, like, talking to Maria about that mm -hmm. just scares me. Mm -hmm. You know, I worry that... She'll get mad at me and won't be able to say what I want to say. And then, you know, once Maria's mad at me, and then everybody in the family will be mad at me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just don't want everybody to hate me. Is it possible that if you asserted yourself to Maria, she might actually be receptive to what you have to say? Maybe. Hmm. It sounds like that from what we've talked about, um, that you often personalize your interactions with your loved ones and you almost feel like you're the blame for the things that happened and that it's your fault if they view you as incompetent. By sometimes becoming aware of these automatic thoughts, it, it can make it better. And my belief is that you'll be able to challenge those thoughts if you keep them um, at a certain level of awareness as you're thinking them. Yeah, I can see that. But I'm just not sure how or yeah. if I would even be able to change them. Yeah. So before we start to wrap up our session today, 
I think it's important for us to go back and discuss a little bit more about what happened with the situation, uh, specifically with Katrina and Allison. Are you comfortable with that? Yes, I am. Okay, great. So, so you told me that Allison was yelling at you and it makes you feel that um, she doesn't care about what you think or how you feel or kind of about your personal agency. Um, that seems like it's very discouraging in your relationship with Allison and kind of makes you feel unworthy and incompetent, which definitely makes sense. That's exactly how I would feel. Um, and, and it also makes you feel like your opinions aren't even valued, which is, is, is unfortunate. So I think it would be helpful if we could reframe those feelings into thoughts that we might be able to use as alternative ways of responding when you're interacting with Katrina and Allison and specifically when you're feeling overwhelmed. Are you okay with that? I'm willing to do that, but I just don't know how. Yeah. So what do you think it means about how you feel if Allison doesn't care about, about your opinions? It's just the same as it's always been. Mm -hmm. You know, I just... I don't think I've ever really had any good ideas about anything, so it's just better to let other people make the decisions and just to try to keep the peace. But it sounds like to me that you have a lot of good ideas, uh, specifically when referring to kind of like different things that should happen in your family system and different ideas that you have about your family. Yeah, I mean, I love my family, but mm -hmm. I, just, I just feel so... Yeah. you know, worthless when it comes to making decisions. Can you think of a time in your life when you set out to achieve something and it didn't exactly turn out how you thought it would? Yeah, um, when I first told my family um, about my relationship mm -hmm. um, with Allison, I thought for sure they were going to disown mm -hmm. me, but, but they did and they were actually pretty accepting of the situation. Mm -hmm. And how did it make you feel when they reacted positively to what you told them? I felt really good about it because I hate it when people are mad at each other. Mm. I think it's really important that you recognize that these situations do make you and a lot of people. It's, it's very, it's a normalizing effect. It, it makes people feel anxiety and feel anxious. Um, I think it might be helpful to learn how to distract you from that anxiety though. We might want to consider including that in one of our goals for our future sessions and for future interactions with your family and, and other people. Um, it's something to think about for down the road, but for now, I think we've made excellent progress today. I'm, I'm really happy and, and proud of you for coming forth and kind of contextualizing your situations and be, really being able to deconstruct what's happening in your life. Um, I think we made excellent progress and I'm, I'm really excited about your future and, and kind of what we're doing here. So I recognize that these are very difficult things to talk about, but I want to kind of gauge how you feel about the session today. How do you think it went? I thought it went pretty well. I'm not used to talking about this stuff, mm -hmm. but um, I guess it's not as hard as I thought it would be. I'm really glad to hear that. So for next week, I think it's important for us to continue to write down our thoughts when these situations happen, and we can talk about those things next week. Okay, I'm willing to do that. Thank you so much, Teresa. I'll see you next week. Okay, see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.